My name's Will McAlpine. I'm the third generation of McAlpines to farm here on Salisbury. We're located between Ningan and Bawarana, known as the Mary Creek District. Salisbury was originally part of a larger place called Womboyan and was split into three portions of 30,000 acre blocks. Um, my family bought, bought one of those blocks in 1977 and my dad continues to run that now. There was quite a bit of scolding when dad took over. Scolding's we call it clay pans, just like bitumen, basically the water just runs off and you don't ever get any growth on it. Some of it's probably natural has always been there, but overgrazing and a few things like that can, can add to it. And we've just tried to manage that by slowing the water down that's on it, by creating water ponds. And um, that catches the water and holds it and tries to promote a bit of growth so that the water will actually seep into the soil and allow sort of more plants and salt bush and trees and grass to sort of grow. So that's probably been our biggest challenge of this country. I think we're probably a long way through getting that done. We've pondered most things, just, just time now and trying to manage it and keep the stock off it and kangaroos and droughts and all part and parcel, I suppose. But we're sort of getting there to try to get as much control of it as we can. It's probably been a fairly big project, I suppose. We've had a lot of funding over the years to do it, which has been of great help, I think. we've would have got there eventually but just fast tracks things a bit and our latest one as you can sort of see behind us is we're trying to fence off the country just from wildlife just so we can get grazing pressure control and and um, look after our country a bit better and try and keep it in good nick for as long as we can. We were all open flowing board drains for the last 10 years and we've recently just got in some cap and pipe schemes and put a lot of it into um, tanks and troughs which has been beneficial trying to spread the stock out around the country rather than grazing around a couple of drains. They, we can put water where we want it now and utilise paddocks better. That's, that's been of great help. And shut down paddocks when there's no stock on it and try and control the wildlife a little bit that way. Our key aim, I suppose, is to run things sustainably. Don't want to run more stock, we just want to be able to run them better and for longer. So get through these dry times as, as good as we can without supplementary feeding and looking after the country as best we can. I think one of the biggest ones that's going to come out of this drought for us is containment feeding, just being able to take stock off the country, the, the country we're trying to look after and promote a bit of growth on if we can pull stock off it when it does turn dry and, and lock them up and feed them in close to the house. I think we'll um, go a long way to looking after this country that's, that's fairly fragile. Our biggest strength, I suppose, is the type of country and, and how well merinos do out here, especially breed. We average about 115% to joining sort of year on year, even through these tough times, we still pulled 100% off last year. I think just the salt bush and the variety of herbage that's around, just the merinos seem to thrive. So that's probably our biggest strength. The biggest weaknesses were probably, uh, strength and a weakness was the board drains. We've started to cap and pipe all that and that's been beneficial and, and fence things up so sort of gain a bit of control and put water where we want it and hopefully look after this country a bit and be here for next generations. <laughs>